Good morning, afternoon and evening all, this is Yorkie with episode 15 of my in-depth track guide and this week we are taking a look at Suzuka from Japan. We're going to be following the usual video format, starting off with the breakdown, followed by the hot laps and then finally the setups at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's get straight on with it. Okay, so starting off with the breakdown then, we're going to be going and control the car just out the exit of 130R and just before the final chicane. So basically brake just before the 100 meter ball, get the car slowed down for the first part, try and open up the second and try and get good traction and also acceleration coming out the corner, try and start draining the curves as soon as possible and get the DRS open at the activation point and keep into the left hand side of the track ready for turn 1. So coming down towards turn 1 now, we're basically just going to throw the car in, keep it completely full throttle right up until this point here. This is the start of our braking zone and we're going to be shifting from 7th gear down into 2nd. You want to be taking the corner in 3rd, but 2nd just kind of helps to get the car slowed down that little bit more and also generate that extra little bit of turn in helping you get in towards the apex. So trail braking and shifting down quite heavily through the gears. We're going to hang towards the middle of the track and we're then going to bring it back in tight ready for turn 2. Hooking up the apex on the inside kerb just here with an apex speed of about 100 miles per hour which equates to 160 kilometers per hour. It's a relatively fast corner at this point and it should be balancing the throttle, continuing to do that throughout the duration of the corner, letting the car run out wide to the exit kerb and basically just getting back on the throttle as you continue through the bend, roughly around about here should be 30, 40, 50, 60, 70%. Running the kerb on the exit 100% and then bring the car over to the right hand side of the track. Flick it in left in towards the apex of turn 3 which is on the inside kerb just here. Your apex speed should be about 145 miles per hour which equates to 235 kilometers per hour. This corner is completely flat out and you should be maintaining full throttle throughout the duration of this bend. But obviously we need to watch the transition between turns 4 and 5, the right hander that follows. So lifting off ever so slightly as we come into turn 5 now, we're now going to throw the car in, again hooking up the inside kerb with an apex speed of 140 miles per hour which equates to 225 kilometers per hour. You just want to clip and run this kerb along the inside here. You don't want to dip your wheel onto the grass on the inside as that will cost you extra grip for the following corner. So coming out through this point you should be balancing the throttle about 70-80%. Let the car drift towards the middle of the track flick it back over across again and in towards the inside kerb of turn 6. You should be trying to hook up the kerb on the inside here with an apex speed of about 130 miles per hour which equates to 210 kilometers per hour. I've come just shy of it ever so slightly as I didn't quite get the car slowed down enough. It was basically just lift it, a case of lifting off the throttle a little bit longer than I did. But at this point I'm balancing the throttle again about 60%. I've run a little bit wide throughout the exit but it's not too bad, you basically just want to try and stick as close to or on the kerb on the inside just here. Your apex point is this point just here with an apex speed of 120 miles per hour which equates to 195 kilometers per hour. Just continue to balance the throttle throughout the duration of the corner and try and hug this inside kerb for as long as possible but as you come out towards the exit you should be bringing the throttle back in more aggressively. At this point here you should be near enough full throttle as you can hear the revs go up. Use this little bump here to help you get back over to the right hand side of the track to try and open up this left hander here. You should be running the kerb of this turn 7 for as long as possible. Your apex speed should be about 135 miles per hour which equates to 215 kilometers per hour. Again keep it completely flat out throughout the duration of this bend and just try and keep a nice smooth shallow flying line throughout the duration of this corner. So coming out through the exit now, you're basically just going to let the car drift out towards the outside of the track, unwinding the wheel ever so slightly. As the corner shallows out, you want to shallow out the steering wheel as well, but just keep a nice smooth flowing line throughout the duration of this corner. Bring the car left to the left hand side ready for turn 8. Your braking point is just here about 60 metres before the corner, it's literally just a short stab of the brake and shift down in one gear from 6th to 5th. Um, basically you just want to try and take this as quickly as possible. Keeping to the left hand side of the track, you're basically just going to throw the car in to roughly at the 50 meter board and we're going to hook up the inside kerb just here. Your apex speed should be about 160 miles per hour which equates to 255 kilometers per hour and you can take a little bit off on the inside ever so slightly but of course try and keep two wheels within those white lines at all times. So coming out through the exit, you should be back on the throttle by this point and basically you're just balancing it roughly about 80-90%. Run the kerb on the exit here, try and get back off the kerb relatively quickly though as you need to brake and slow the car down ready for turn 9 and braking on kerbs makes it very easy to look up front wheels. So roughly at this point here, about 60-70 metres before the corner, we're going to be braking and shifting from 5th gear down into 1st but unfortunately there are no brake marker borders for reference. So. Keep it to the left hand side of the track, we're going to brake, we're going to throw the car in, 
we dropped it down into first ever so slightly just momentarily just to try and get us that extra little bit of turning but we've immediately gone back up into second you basically want to clip this point on the inside curve just here your apex speed should be about 80 miles per hour which equates to 130 kilometers per hour and again you can take a little bit off on the inside but please do try and keep those two wheels within the white lines so coming out through the exit should be back on the throttle run the curb upon the exit there should be full throttle at this point obviously you want to try and open up this corner and try and turn in as late as possible to try and create a nice straight braking zone ready for this hairpin of turn 11. Your braking point is just here, just as we're passing this orange marker on top of this little lamppost to the right hand side of the track on the other side of the barrier just here. And we're going to be braking from 5th gear, shifting all the way down into 1st. You need to get the car slowed down before turning in, and it's very easy to lock those front wheels. So, braking hard and shifting down through the gears. We're going to throw the car in towards the inside curb. And you're aiming to hook up the apex point just here with an apex speed of about 50 miles per hour which equates to 80 kilometers per hour it's kind of a mid to late apex point as you will try, want to try and straighten up the exit try and get that traction down and try and get out of the corner as fast as possible so coming out through the exit now we're basically just going to balance the throttle be very very cautious as turning whilst accelerating through this corner can quite easily spin out the rear end so once we get the car straight, that's when we go full throttle up in second gear. Once you get up into third, start draining about 40% of your curves as you come now down through this long turn 12. Completely flat out to try and keep a nice smooth flowing line. Bring the car to the right hand side, ready for turn 13, this right hander. Just as we're passing the 100 meter board, probably about 80 meters before the corner, is our braking point. We're going to be braking and shifting down from seventh gear, dropping down three gears into fourth. We're going to throw the car in as well, just as we're coming through this braking zone, and basically aiming to hook up the inside curb. So doing exactly that, turning in just before the 50 meter board, running this curb on the inside here quite nicely. Your apex speed should be about 125 miles per hour, which equates to 200 kilometers per hour. At this point, you want to be balancing the throttle probably about 30-40%. You want to let the car drift over towards the outside of the track, but you want to be ready to start braking again, and also turning in for turn 14. So coming out through the exit now, Aim for the curb upon the outside, and roughly here, there's no real reference point, it's mostly based on judgement and feel. You're going to be braking and shifting from 4th gear down into 2nd. You will be taking the corner in 3rd, but again, 2nd just helps to generate that extra little bit of turn in. So coming into this section here, we're basically just going to be trail braking while shifting down through the gears. We're going to drop it down into 2nd and let the car drift in towards the inside curb. As soon as we hook up the curb and hit this apex point up, that's when we want to start bringing the throttle back in. Your apex speed should be about 100 miles per hour, which again equates to 160 kilometers per hour. And coming out through the exit of this corner, you want to be balancing the throttle and letting the car drift over towards the outside curb. So doing exactly that now, getting the throttle back in should be about 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 percent. Run the curb upon the exit here, and then we're going to drain about 20, 30 percent of our curves as we come down along this back straight, passing back over the bridge again. We're going to keep to the right hand side of the track to try and open up 130R, it's completely flat out and basically just as we pass under that fly emirates board and pass the shadow, that's when we're going to throw the car in towards the apex of the corner, you basically just want to try and keep a shallow steering angle and try and keep that speed up. Your apex speed should be about 190 miles per hour, which equates to 305 kilometers per hour. Stay completely flat out throughout the duration of this corner. And basically from this point here, you want to be starting to straighten up the wheel ever so slightly. Let the car drift over to the right hand side of the track to try and maintain that speed. We're going to bring the car back over to the left hand side of the track, ready for this chicane. And just as we get to the 100 meter board, that is our braking zone. We're going to be braking very, very heavily and shifting down the gears rapidly from seventh all the way down into first to try and get the car slowed down for the first apex of the corner. So, keeping to the left hand side of the track, braking hard, shifting down through the gears. We're going to throw the car in towards the apex here. And basically, you want to try and dip the wheel, the front right wheel, just over the inside of the curb onto the kind of turquoise coloured astroturf there. Your apex speed should be about 65 miles per hour, which equates to 105 kilometers per hour. And I've only just about managed to clip the curb on the inside here. I've only just about managed to get the car slowed down. But like I said, you basically want to take a tiny little bit off on the inside. So coming into the second part, you're going to give a short spurt of the throttle. You're then going to transition into this left-hander of the chicane. Again, your apex speed should be just on the other side of the of the curb just here. You have an apex speed of about 65 miles per hour, which equates to 105 kilometers per hour. And at this point here, you should be balancing the throttle probably about 20%, not too much more. And as you come out through the exit, you basically want to straighten up the wheel, let the car drift over to the curb on the exit here, basically just follow the corner all the way around. Once you're up into second, third gear, that's when you should be full throttle. Obviously drain the rest of the curves to the start-finish line and open the DRS at the activation point to complete your lap. 
So we're now going to move on to the hot lap, which is basically exactly the same lap that I just showed you there, but without me talking over the top. So you can listen to my throttle inputs and also the engine sounds to get a general sense of the speed. Okay, so that was the hot lap up in the dry. We're now going to move on to the wet hot lap and basically talk about the different breaking points and also curves usage, apexes, all that sort of thing in these conditions. So again, same approach to the final corner. Basically, just try and get that second apex hooked up. Try and open up the corner, give yourself the best acceleration and drain the curves before the start finish line. No DRS this time. We're going to hang to the left-hand side of the track again, ready for turn one. And again, it's pretty much exactly the same approach, but maybe breaking about 5-10 metres earlier. Take the first part completely flat out, let the car get slowed down and bring it back over to the inside kerb, ready for turn 2. Run the kerb upon the exit, again completely flat out through turn 3. Slight lift for turn 4, balancing the throttle turn 5. Again, slight lift through mid apex, but not very much. And then turn 6, again, a slight lift, downshift into 4th. Keep it completely flat out through turn 7 there. And we're now going to just continue completely flat out, ready for turn 8. Throw the car in, we're going to drop down gear or two down into 5th and then we're going to break and shift down into 2nd gear. Keep it in 2nd for stability through that corner and again you want to take the same approach as this one, try and open it up and try and create a straight line coming out the exit to slow yourself down for the hairpin. Miss the apex slightly but not too bad there. Be very patient on the throttle on the exit there as it's very easy to spin those rear wheels but once you get up into 3rd gear and you've got the traction down, that's when you start draining your curse, draining in about 40%. So we've now come down into turn 13 here, again exactly the same approach, same again with turn 14. Run the kerb upon the exit, again drain about 20-30% of your curves as you come down along this back straight now. And we're basically again going to take 130R completely flat out, so passing them that fly emirates board there. Throw the car in, clip the kerb on the inside, clip the kerb on the exit. Coming across over to the left hand side of the track, ready for the chicane, breaking about 5-10 metres earlier than it was in the dry. Again, same approach throughout the duration of both corners. Let the car drift over to the outside of the track and drain the rest of the curves to the start finish line to complete your lap. So, we're now going to move on to the setups, which is the final part of the video, and basically talk about the setups that I ran for both the dry and wet laps there. So, for the dry on the aero, we were using 2 2 on wing angles, 48 52% on balance, and then high and standard on pressure and size. Your anti roll bar balance should be a 9 on the front, 2 on the rear, maybe slightly softer on the front. 1-1 one, one, and then the 7 and the 2 for our suspension setup. Those were the gear ratios that I was using in miles per hour. And then again, of course, the gear ratios in kilometers per hour for you Europeans and Americans out there. And then finally, the tow and camber settings, relatively aggressive on the camber on the rear this time. So moving on to the wet lap, we're using a 3-3 on the wing angles, both front and rear. Brake balance was exactly the same. Pressure is a medium and standard brake disc size. Our balance for the anti-roll bars was an 8 and a 1, slightly softer both on front and rear. Suspension, 7 and a 1, again slightly softer on the rear suspension. 
and then those are the gear ratios that I was using in miles per hour and of course the gear ratios again in kilometers per hour just there for you and then finally the tow and camber settings were exactly the same as they were for the dry so that's going to complete it for this in-depth track guide episode hopefully you guys enjoyed it please give it a rating if you have any comments or questions feel free to leave them below and of course don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content track guides and other f1 and project cars related videos in the future i shall hopefully see you soon guys take care